Hi, I'm Matt and welcome to Less Dependent Wisconsin. Today we're going to be looking at organically fertilizing and feeding my garden. I'm going to show you different ways that I make some of the fertilizer myself. I'm going to show you some local sources of fertilizer. There's a good reason why you want to get into making your own fertilizer. Number one, if the prices go up on store-bought fertilizer or the supply goes down, it's a skill you've learned. It's relatively cheap to do. A lot of it's just stuff that's either around your house or you can source locally. And you know what's in it. So that's always good to know about what you're putting into your food that you're going to be eating. So we're gonna talk about NPK, what that stands for and why that is needed to know it when you're fertilizing. We're gonna look at clover as a ground cover and we're also gonna look at straw and some of the benefits of having straw around your garden. So quite a bit of stuff to talk about. Let's get started. When it comes to fertilizing our garden, the first thing we have to talk about is NPK, which stands for nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. This is a rating, you'll see it on bags of fertilizer. It'll say something like 4-1-1. That's just the ratio of those different ingredients in the fertilizer. You can think of the nitrogen as something that helps the plants grow. You can think of the phosphorus as something that benefits the roots. And the potassium is just something the plant needs in general. So as we go over the different types of fertilizer I make and use, I will talk about the NPK ratings. Uh, it's more of a general rating. I haven't had my specific fertilizers tested. Making your own compost is by far the cheapest and easiest thing you can do to feed your garden. And it's basically just leftovers, dead leaves, dead bark, weeds, kitchen scraps, coffee grounds, you name it. If it's organic, you can put it in your compost bin and it'll turn into something you can use. Here I use last year's compost when I was filling my raised garden beds. So you can see what that looks like. Um, most compost will have a range of about five to three nitrogen, one phosphorus and two potassiums. This compost right here has been cooking for a couple of weeks now, but it'll be ready to go next spring when I'm ready to amend the soil in my garden. Fish emulsion is something you can make at home and it's a very effective fertilizer for your garden. It's relatively cheap. You're using fish guts, scraps, uh, anything you can find like that from a fish market or if you can go fishing and catch your own fish, a little bit of sugar, to feed the yeast and then water. Now I made this bucket of fish emulsion last summer, it sat all winter, so it's ready to go. As you can see, I got about four gallons in there. I'm gonna cut that with water and I'll get probably about eight gallons out of it. If you buy fish emulsion in the store, you're looking at probably $20 a gallon. So uh, the NPK of fish emulsions generally four, to one to one so it's pretty effective and easy to do the one disadvantage to fish emulsion though it does stink and attracts flies so the emulsion that I have cooking is sitting in the very back of my property and is really no inconvenience at all now one valuable source of nutrients I get for my garden is I raise quail you see by the birds inside their cages but every four days or so i get this tray of beautiful quail poop and quail excrement is really high in nutrients for the garden uh, it's got a three to one npk ratio you figure i get three or four of these trays a week and over 52 year, weeks in the year, I'm getting about 150 trays of quail excrement. 
and it goes everywhere in my garden and then I till it into the ground in the spring before I start growing. I've added it to all my raised beds before I put the final layer of topsoil in there. It's just an excellent source of nutrition for me. Basically, and it only costs me, you know, what I have to feed the quails every month. So I'm looking about $25 a month in food and another $5 in wood shavings. So you're looking at about 30 bucks a month for an endless supply of good stuff for your garden. Also, the quail eggshells, if you have those left over after you're done cooking or if an egg gets cracked and you can't use it, you can throw that in your garden as well. It adds calcium to the soil. It'll break down over time. And basically, I have to feed the quails crushed oyster shells, uh, which is like $10 for a 25-pound bag. It'll last me probably almost close to a year and a half. So it's a pretty effective way to add calcium to your garden. Worm castings are another great way to feed your garden. The disadvantage to worm castings, it does take a long time to harvest. I've started my own worm farm, but if I get 20 pounds of worm castings in a year, I'll be pleasantly surprised. Now these worm castings I got from Tom over at Pure Earth Worm Farm in Phillips, Wisconsin. He charges $25 for a 20 pound bag and it is very high quality worm castings. He gives you paperwork on the testing of it. Uh, most worm castings will range with the NPK of a 553 to a 100, uh, but his is good stuff. When you plant plants, you'll put a handful of this in the bottom before you put the plant in or seedling in, and then the seedling can feed off of that. Or as in this picture, after the plants have been established, like with my corn, you put the worm castings in between the plants so as they get watered, the worm castings and the nutrients go into the soil and feed the plants. Now, something you may want to consider is replacing your grass with clover and using that as a ground cover. It adds nitrogen to the soil, bees can feed on the flowers, gives the rabbits something to eat other than what's growing in your garden, and it's naturally better for the environment than just a grass lawn. Now, straw is something that no gardener should live without. Around here, it's relatively cheap, anywhere from five to seven dollars a bale. Uh, the farmers sell it right from their houses. There's so many things you can do with it. Here, I'm actually growing potatoes and straw. Uh, you can use straw to fill up pots so you don't have to put as much dirt in them as I did with these. I'm growing potatoes in buckets using straw. It's an excellent weed barrier and it helps retain moisture. Um, you can see here from my um, pumpkin patch and my watermelon patch and that's how I'm using the straw there. In the winter you can put it down so your dog can walk on it so they don't have to be you know so their paws aren't exposed to the frozen ground. Here's a picture of Melee walking on the straw and going to use that as a bathroom. Uh, but, you know, most of your plants love it. You know, it can be worked in the ground if you till every year. Uh, just consider using straw in your garden. Another good thing you can add to your garden is leftover ash and charcoal from your barbecue pit. If you've ever heard of biochar, it's basically the same thing and it adds nutrients to the ground, which helps your plants. And in this case, I'm using it in my corn patch. So that's a general picture of what I use to fertilize my garden. I hope you've learned a few things. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. If you are a subscriber, thank you very much. Focus on being less dependent. We'll see you soon. Have a great day.